Hi, my name is Vince Ambrosia, and I'm the Associate Program Manager for Well and Fire in the uh, Applied Science Program at NASA Headquarters. I'm uh, in my 42nd year of working with NASA, and this will be my final year. I came out of grad school in uh, December, well, November of 1980, and um, uh, was involved in, uh, in grad school in remote sensing, earth science studies, geophysical studies, and primarily working in the, in the forestry realm using earth observation data in, uh, in forestry. And a job opportunity came up in California in, uh, at NASA Ames Research Center. So I accepted that position in November of 1980. And from there, it's just been a, a ride through history and uh, through the evolution of remote sensing endeavors and the earth science program at NASA headquarters uh, up until today. When I first started at, uh, at NASA in the early 1980s, I had this idea or concept of, uh, of being able to monitor fires globally, to look at uh, you know, loss of carbon or the distribution of carbon from fires. And uh, I thought that that was uh, an interesting approach to take, is look at global monitoring of fires. I never thought it was possible in early 1980s. And now today it's a reality and we do it on a daily basis. We operate our earth observation systems daily to derive daily and multiple times a day, earth observations of wildland fire throughout the entire globe. So that was something I never really anticipated in the early 1980s. I would have liked to have thought it was in the near future, but it ended up to be reality now and that's how we, uh, we operate. That's probably one of the most uh, amazing things that I can think of. You know, the, the processing speed at which we can handle data from the 1980s that we had uh, simplified data systems, simplified analysis systems, computer systems, to be able to do just small scale modeling efforts to now doing daily global observation of conditions throughout the globe. So the relationship between the fire community, specifically the U.S. Forest Service and NASA, dates back many, many years, dates back to the mid 1970s when the Remote Sensing Application Center within the U.S. Forest Service, one of the early stages of it, was co-located at NASA Johnson um, Space Center. That uh, facility actually moved off of there, off of NASA Johnson, and moved to Salt Lake City, but NASA continued to engage with the U.S. Forest Service. We had a number of uh, years or a number of um, collaborative agreements, Space Act agreements, interagency agreements, that have expanded over the years, dating from the 1970s on to the current day, where we uh, matured these agreements to collaborate between us on pushing forward the te technology development and maturing them so they could be put into operational use within the wildland fire management community, specifically the U.S. Forest Service. So that has all come to fruition finally in uh, probably the last 10 years where we've matured those relationships and now hold co-meetings co together between our two agencies every year, twice a year actually, to uh, promote and uh, advance the, the capabilities and share the new capabilities that are coming out of our uh, Earth Observations community members with those on the fire line and in the fire front and in the fire management community and in the incident command centers to these new emerging technologies. So that really relationship that we built over these years has now come to an exciting position where we have the transition of these research to operations components um, that are coming into use with our, with our partner agencies. And so I think that's the most exciting part of any relationship that you can have between two entities is to have have you know, the, a research and development arm that's uh, maturing up new concepts and that are being integrated into um, real life operations uh, for use in supporting wildland fire management in the United States and throughout the world. I guess one of the most exciting things I was ever involved in working with NASA was our NASA Kana Western States Wildland Fire Imaging Mission. NASA Kana was an unmanned aircraft system that NASA had just acquired from General Atomics, and we were the first mission to, uh, to fly on that platform. We integrated a uh, multispectral scanner 
and our plans were to fly over uh, multiple fires over the western United States doing all onboard autonomous processing of that sensor data collected on that platform, relaying it to the ground in map ready format to the incident command centers and deliver that information within a matter of minutes of acquisition and do this multiple times over fires throughout the United States, as I said, and over mission lengths that extended out to 24 hours because the platform was capable of 24 hour missions. That was the most, probably the most exciting time in my life because it was so groundbreaking. We were the first civilian unmanned aerial vehicle to ever fly freely throughout the national airspace in the United States. And uh, some of my colleagues considered it Wright, bro Wright Brother-esque. And uh, so I was kind of proud of that moment, proud of our team that really pulled that together. I didn't do much as far as lead, I just led the team. It was a team effort that was involved a number of different scientists from uh, Ames and NASA um, Armstrong and other research centers uh, collaborating to create this, this uh, capability to provide this information in real time. And that was really exciting. So we, we were kind of pioneers in that regard. And that's probably my proudest moment. Second proudest moment or second most exciting development for me was really kind of working with NASA headquarters in the Applied Science Program. I really saw that, um, that that was what I had done my whole career, was working with partner entities. I was really an applications development person and really a communicator with our partners in the fire community for so many years that I saw this as an opportunity to really um, kind of promote NASA Earth observation tools. And I had the feeling that I had the, uh, the, uh, the capabilities to do that based upon my background with working with that applied science community for many, many years. So that was probably my, my second greatest uh, excitement or the second greatest the thing that really stimulated uh, my interest in, uh, in continuing on with uh, Earth observation tools with NASA. So what I'm really going to miss in my retirement is the engagement with my partner entities um, throughout the world. I mean, we've had the uh, capability to uh, work with people throughout the world, not just in the United States, but my colleagues in the fire world, fire and the remote sensing world, from um, throughout Europe, throughout uh, Latin America. Um, I'm really gonna miss the engagement with them. And I, I plan to stay involved with them um, in those engagements, in those workshops, and in those seminar series, and in those conferences. Um, I'll just take a different approach to how I engage in that. I'll engage in it as an onlooker, being proud of the, uh, the advances that we all made and shared together, but looking at that as, as um, I develop these friendships over time with these people, and uh, so I'm going to miss that, but um, I really will stay engaged with all those people anyways. So um, that's probably the most important thing that, uh, that you miss is you don't miss the, the science necessarily. You miss the engagement with the people that become your friends. They move from being colleagues, uh, scientific colleagues, mentors, to being your friends. And that's what I think I, uh, I will really miss is seeing those people kind of every day in my work life but also um, engaging with them uh, at international conferences. When I'm not at work, I'm a golf fanatic. Um, and uh, when I'm not a golf fanatic, uh, fanatic I, uh, I enjoy fishing and hunting, uh, fly fishing especially. Uh, and I've got a group of uh, former NASA employees that we all get together every year and go on an annual hunting trip to Wyoming. And that's uh, my time away from home for about two to three weeks. And uh, I really enjoy that, you know, getting out with my colleagues camping in the wilderness, uh, sitting around the campfire at night, enjoying the, uh, the friendship of all of us, and uh, enjoying the ability to be out in nature. So what am I gonna do when I retire? Uh, I don't sit still. I'm not gonna be one of those that ever sits still. Um, I enjoy uh, golf, as I said, and I pretty much will probably be playing or practicing, working on my game every day, like I've done uh, for the last uh, 50 years of playing the game. Um, so I enjoy that very much. Uh, my wife and I enjoy uh, traveling, and I had a great opportunity to travel when working for NASA. And so that led me to discover all these cool places that I want to revisit with her um, throughout Europe and, uh, and the rest of the world. I've had a great opportunity to travel, um, and so I want to continue that. Um, in line with that, I did have an opportunity a few years ago to join my daughter, my wife, in traveling to Antarctica. So uh, I got to visit the seventh continent and my seventh continent and my daughter's seventh continent. 
What would I tell the new generation of researchers, whether it's uh, in the wild and fire applications field or any field within, uh, within the earth, observa earth observation context? Um, learn all you can, be a sponge. Go to seminars, go to workshops, go to conferences. Engage a community, go in with open mind to everything you hear. Build partnerships, um, engage with, uh, with community members, not just on a professional basis, but on a fr friendship basis too. I think those are the re way relationships really come to fruition and projects really develop out of those uh, relationships. Look for somebody to mentor you. Ask questions, constantly ask questions. Never be timid about asking uh, questions of your peers, uh, of people you respect as higher authorities in a subject field. Um, never be afraid to step up at a conference and ask somebody a question while they, after they've just given a presentation. That's the way you learn. Never be intimidated by people. You might think that professors or somebody with a PhD is above you and that you shouldn't really talk to them. Go and talk to them. Be inquisitive. Um, always ask questions. Uh, always look for th ways of doing things better. Don't just be satisfied with um, doing just, en just enough work. I guess it comes around to being, being a sponge. Absorb as much information as you can.